wanted this week to talk about the awarding of the Nobel Prize for Physiology or, or Medicine uh, for 2021. And um, the, the, the research itself is really interesting. Um, it's not new. That's the first thing we've got to, 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 to remember. It's not new. And, and that's actually not the subject of um, this conversation, uh, which we, uh, we will cover that um, a, a little bit and we'll talk about that later on. But the principle of the, the, the research is about touch receptors and the idea that we can dis, be able to discover um, receptors in, in, in the body that open ion channels. Now you need to have a grasp on, on the idea of ion channels and, and what happens in terms of what's coming into those channels um, from outside to inside. Um, and so there's a, a little bit of sort of uh, molecular biology involved in that. But essentially um, things react, channels and cells and, and and, and nerves react according to the action potential, the information that's given them. And, and these two guys, David Julius and um, Arden Pataputian, both out of California, have done an enormous amount of work using um, pepper, capsicum and menthol to be able to, and also mechanical pressure, to identify a particular channel that opens in relation to, um, to touch. Now, what I want to do is just play you the, uh, the, the first minute or so of the interview that David Julius has, has, has done and, and go from there and, and tell you uh, what I'm thinking about that. So have a look at this for a second. We know a lot about various senses like vision and hearing. I think the sense of touch and pain really sort of was somewhat enigmatic, even among all the senses. And so, you know, I think the work that my lab's done, that Artem's lab done, really sort of provided the molecular tools to really understand the sense of touch in detail. And, and what that does from a, a translational point of view or potentially a clinical point of view is to um, lead to the discovery of new targets and molecules for developing new types of analgesic drugs. I think identifying these molecules gives us tags to understand the cells that are involved and to begin to understand the neural circuitry that's involved. So at one level, it's just more basic curiosity-driven science to really understand the pathway through which pain signals and touch signals are sent from, the, from your skin, for example, to your spinal cord, to your brain, and really understand each stage because uh, maladaption or you know, chronic pain can occur at each of those stages. And so these give, this gives, you know, work has given us a handle to really following that roadmap and trajectory. And then, um, you know, drug discovery is a long road. And so I think it's opened the way to allow pharmaceutical firms to use the knowledge that we've acquired, accumulated, and discoveries to, you know, mount drug screening efforts and clinical trials. But, you know, that's a long road to hoe, as they say. And so, you know, that'll take a while. But I think, you know, our work has helped to launch some of that. So fair enough, Julia, David Julius has, has talked about um, th this discovery, but the primary element of it is that the fact that he's now saying this opens the way to, um, to, to, to research and development on uh, pharmaceutical analgesics. And, and, and when I heard that, I'm like, it was a face palm moment for me. I'm like, that's the only takeaway that you've got? If we go into the, um, the, the, the page from the NobelPrize.org, uh, and I'll put the link um, below here, then what we're talking about here is that the idea that the, the, the ions that open with pressure um, have the p capacity to, to change the way that we uh, work on our physiology in terms of uh, blood pressure and um, our cultural ability to feel ourselves. So what they did was they found a gene um, that was part of the process of opening the channel and when they pressed onto it, um, it opened the channel and then they took that gene out, pressed onto the same structure and the channel didn't open. So they managed to isolate the, the, the gene that's involved in feeling touch, proprioception, the, the space, the understanding of the world around us. It's, it's remarkable stuff. David Julius' discovery also um, allowed us to understand that how um, uh, the differences in temperature can also um, send electrical signals um, into the nervous system. So these, these thermoreceptors is, 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 is amazing. Um, we've understood that we have that, um, but there's the interpretation of it has been very different over hundreds of years. And David Julius um, discovered this, this way of, of, of using heat to um, open these channels. So the thing about these channels um, that open 
open up under pressure, um, and they're called piezo one and piezo two, and piezo is a, a Greek word meaning pressure, mean that um, th this opening of these channels mean that there's a, a regulation of a whole raft of things, including uh, blood pressure, respiration, bladder control, um, and, a, and a load of other things as well. For my takeaway, what I can see is that we should now take this and go, wow, so touch actually um, has been demonstrated. There's a Nobel Prize been awarded for um, the understanding that touch can open specific channels that can then take signals to the brain, to, rather the spine to the brain and back out again. And what we're doing is we're using that to develop analgesics. We've got a problem with analgesics already, painkillers. We know that in, in chronic pain conditions, uh, analgesics and pain medication is, is really inefficient and potentially addictive on a whole raft of, of, of levels. For me, it, it's exciting because it, it, although we have always known it, um, it officially brings into play the idea that touch has a role in the regulation of all these things um, and that we should be using touch in a therapeutic manner, primarily before we try the use of analgesics. That's, that's what my takeaway from that is, um, is that yes, maybe analgesics might have an effect, but clearly here is some research that is absolutely 100% without any question, um, demonstrating that touch um, has um, a, a role in the regulation of blood pressure and respiration. And, but still, you know, how much more do we need to uh, bang on the door of touch therapy to, you know, there's touch therapists bang on the door and go, hey, this is here. There's a Nobel Prize for it that says touch is really, really important, but you still want to use it to develop uh, pharmaceuticals for, for, for pain, which has been shown to be a problem for many, many years. Um, it's a head in hands moment. It doesn't take away from the genius of, of these guys, uh, who by the way, were working separately, they're working independently, work, working together. It doesn't take away from the um, profound, profundity of their work and their discoveries. It, it, it's just that you know you've you've got you've you've found a Ferrari and and you want to drive it to <laughs> you want to drive it to school and back, um, and that's all you've ever used it to do. So why else would you know? It doesn't matter what car we give you. You're only ever going to drive it to to the shops and back. Um, and and that's really the frustrating thing for me. The 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 potential for this, uh, the potential for this to be um, uh, to be used in a way that then takes touch therapy to the forefront of medicine, which we know is cheap, which we know is non-addictive, which we know now is, which we know is effective, and which we know now has a physiological effect on, on many important and vital systems of the body, and bring that to the forefront of pain management, you know, the first call of pain management um, uh, under any circumstances, and still it's not there, and still even the Nobel, the Nobel laureate is saying, oh, this is great, it opens the way for pharmaceutical intervention. Um, it's, um, it's not surprising. It's um, a little bit heartbreaking, of course, uh, as these things are. Um, and it's enormously frustrating, but it does pave the way for other researchers to then come along and go, all right, well, now let's see what these ion channels do in relation to um, uh, other types of touch. So we know we have mechanoreceptors uh, that respond to, to, to you know, different pressures. Um, do these um, do these piezo one and piezo two open um, according to different pressures? How little pressure can we apply? And we're talking about those channels opening with um, a application of a micro pipette. That's how we're, we're talking about. How, um, how little pressure do we need to apply? What type of pressure? Um, what other kind of psychological in involvement might there need to be uh, from the person receiving it? Um, what can block those in, in relation? So if the gene, we know if the gene is removed, um, that can be blocked. Uh, but what else could block it? Are uh, you know there's lots of reasons that um, ion channels won't open. So what are the the factors involved in the um, in the opening and closing of those channels? Other factors involved, and um, and uh, it's a, it's a, it's an ongoing story as with all scientific development. But the but the takeaway from this is that we now know that ion channels will open under mechanical pressure. Cellular change will take place from touch, um, and uh, body systems will be regulated. That that's not a 
a theory anymore. It's not an idea that we all have as 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 airy fairy therapists that are touching and stroking people. You know, this is this is up to date um, physiological science um, and uh, neuroscience, and it's at the cutting edge. And there's a Nobel Prize that's been awarded. So it's onward and upwards, but ah, oh, just so frustrating. <laughs> so. Anyway, listen, thank you so much for watching. As per usual, uh, get involved in the conversation. Please share, subscribe, do all the things you're supposed to do in social media. And, uh, you know, let's get the conversation going and, and maintained. And um, let me know what you think. Bye for now.